Hey, now listen, there's a lot of interest at the moment about the possibilities of there being life elsewhere in the universe. And research into that sort of stuff is helping us understand how life might have started here on Earth. So my quest to get to the bottom of all this starts with an experiment that took place in Chicago in 1952. And this is a reconstruction of it. It's the classic Stanley Miller, Harold Urey experiment. And essentially what it is, is a closed system designed to replicate the conditions on Earth several billion years ago. So up here we've got our atmosphere and it's filled with basic gases like hydrogen, methane and ammonia. Very different, of course, to the atmosphere we've got now. Down here, bubbling away, you've got a primitive ocean creating water vapor. The whole lot mixes here. And what they did was they actually put a spark through the whole lot using these two electrodes to simulate lightning. And then they went away for a week to see what happened. So they came back after a week and had a little look inside. And what they found was this rather unpleasant, brown, sticky, smelly stuff. But when they analysed it, they found it was full of chemicals called amino acids. Now, not life itself, but certainly part of the building blocks that can make life possible. This gunk made from simple gases and a spark of electricity was full of complex chemicals which could go on to make life. Indeed, for all its flaws, the Miller-Urey experiment suggested we might be getting close to learning how we all began. And that led others to speculate about another controversial idea. If the basic chemicals you need for life could be created here on Earth, then could they have been created elsewhere in the universe? That wasn't quite as mad as it may seem. We're fairly sure there are planets not too different from Earth elsewhere in the universe. Could the building blocks of life have been carried from one of them? Or could it even have been formed in the depths of space itself? Every year, over 50,000 tonnes of extraterrestrial matter rains down from space to the Earth. Now, that's a lot of stuff. In fact, it's about twice the mass of your average aircraft carrier. Most of it is in the form of dust, but every once in a while, something a little bit more substantial lands. For instance, in 1969, a meteorite fell to the Earth in southern Australia called the Murchison meteorite, and that weighed over 100 kilograms. That's more than I weigh. Now, if you're hoping to find the building blocks of life in space, looking at meteorites like Murchison might be a good place to start. So, a handful of scientists here at Imperial College in London have recently been analysing meteorites like Murchison with startling results. This is an actual fragment of meteorite that fell from space to Earth. It's over four and a half billion years old, untouched by human hand. This is Zeta Martin from Imperial College. Now, you're an, you're an astrobiologist, yes. and it's your job to actually analyse these mm -hmm. and find out what kind of molecules are, are present. Exactly. Mm -hmm. can, we, can we sort of do that? Yeah, now? of course. This is a mass spectrometer, a fantastic bit of kit that can analyse the chemicals within our meteorites with incredible accuracy. OK, so here are our results. So if I just scroll down, what are we actually seeing here? Uh, we're seeing a molecule called uracil, which is a molecule present in our genetic material. Yes. So this is really exciting uh, results. It's a hugely significant find. Uracil is one of life's basic building blocks, and this one seemed to come from outer space, making it controversial stuff. So controversial that many scientists argue that the results might be inaccurate because the meteorite could have been contaminated by life on Earth. But for the first time, Zeta's results proved categorically that those chemicals were of extraterrestrial origin. Normally, uracil is mainly built from the element carbon-12, but the uracil in the Murchison meteorite contained a very high ratio of carbon-13, incredibly rare on Earth, 
but common in space. So when we look to our results, we know that we have a much bigger ratio of, uh, of carbon-13 over 12, and therefore this molecule, the uracil, can only be formed in outer space. So and it's not contamination. So there's absolutely no way that that, no that, way. that, 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 could, that could be synthesized on Earth? No. This is such an important thing. How did it make you feel when you discovered it? Well, it was very, very exciting news and discovery, and we were the first ones really proving that components of our genetic material were present already in our early solar system. So that's really big news and exciting and everything. Well, wow, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty amazing. So I guess the, the kind of million dollar question, life here on Earth, did, did, did we sort of come from space? Well, you or is can't, that too far? Well, you can't say that. We're not saying that meteorites brought life itself. We're just saying it brought the building blocks of life. So, are we aliens? Well, these are the facts. Thanks to Zeta and her team, incredibly, we now know the most basic building blocks of life exist in space, and over the years have definitely come to Earth from space. And for me, that's almost as exciting. <laughs>